So, you got a problem. You live on a balcony. You don't got enough space to do big time gardening. Well, sometimes, just like city planners used to do, if you didn't have enough space outward, you can go upward. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a vertical garden using a simple skid, or a skid, right? They call them skids, or in Australia, do they call them uh, pallets? You remember what our dads say, there's a right tool for everything, so let's see what we're gonna need. How dare you? A pallet. It's a skid. A stapler and a lot of staples. Gardener's cloth, a board. A hammer. A flamethrower! <laughs> that one's optional. And a knife. Now this is very important information and it is crucial that you don't get distracted. When looking for a pallet or a skid, you always want to make sure it has an HT symbol on it. That means it's heat treated rather than being treated with chemicals that may be harmful to you. So if it has an HT, you're good to go. Now this all comes to aesthetics and we're going to use our trusty handy dandy hammer, which is the grandfather of all tools. Now, where do you want your garden bed to be placed? Where do you want each one to grow? Well, I want more of these slats open so I can plant more vegetables. So the first thing you want to do is take your crowbar or a hammer and start paring these back. Take them apart and you can save this wood. This actually is from, uh, this is from America, this skid. You can tell by the uh, numbers on it, it says USA. So. Just get rid of those, and then see all these extra, these little nails? The great thing is, hammer, you can just hammer it right back in. And if they're giving you a hard, hard time, you can always just turn the skid over. Bang it out from the back, and it makes it a lot easier just to rip it out. Get rid of all those extra little nails. So we removed all the boards, and now this is for all you crazy pyromaniacs out there. We're gonna have a little extracurricular fun with the old Japanese wood burning technique of Shishogi Bon. It's just like watering your garden, but with fire. All done, now let's build this vertical garden. Right, this is where we're gonna put all the plants in between all those little spots. But we wanna flip it backward. All right guys, so we're gonna use some cheap, simple gardening cloth, or you could use some hessian, whatever you feel like. But uh, really it's just meant to keep the soil locked inside the container because we're essentially we're making a giant pot. And then using this as a guide, we can see how much cloth we're going to need because we're just going to staple the inside. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a guide. Do you remember when I said you guys need a board? Well, this is what the board's for. And this is just one of those pro tips that I, I really pride myself on. But you stick that board right there, right underneath, and then guess what? Pull out your trusty knife of choice, take it, Oh yeah, that feels really good, doesn't it? God, it feels good to be a gardening gangster. Just like that. Take your board again. Use it like this. And if you noticed, I doubled it up so it will fit perfectly for both sides. Okay, so take it and then weave it just like this on the back end, okay? Just like that. And then take your other side. And if you have leftover bits like that, the great thing about this cloth is just take it and fold it back. And then I'll do the same for the other side, that way it evens out. Now it's always a good idea to double up on this. And you want, see where the lips are right here? You want them to come up so it actually forms that bowl. When you do the stapling, it's going to be up against there too. So you want to double do them so they're extra strong. 
Using your stapler now, start stapling the fabric cloth to the internal corners of your skid. And you want to get it good and taut so it's nice and compact, okay? Then you just run through your stapler again and just get it nice and taut. So there's a lot of foldings. And you know, my mother was a men's tailor, so I think I know what I'm doing. Throw me them staples. And you're gonna go through a lot of staples. So make sure you buy extra. Okay, locked and loaded. And remember, it doesn't have to look beautiful because all this is gonna be covered up in dirt. Okay, now that we've got it as taunt as possible on all sides, we can start doing the actual stapling of the board slats across. All right, so the front end will end up looking like this, which is great because you have all this room for all the plants and mud to stay inside there. And now let's do the back end. So now I'm gonna do pretty much the exact same thing besides I'm going to cover the back entirely. And here's a cool thing, pick which side you want to be up. This side looks best up. So what I'll do is I'll actually make this fold over a little bit more when I do the final cut. So leave a little bit so you can fold underneath there. And make sure there's a slight overhang because when we cut it, we're also going to fold that over kind of like a Christmas present. But this is gonna be our bottom, so we're gonna to wanna to make sure this part's really strong because all the weight of that soil is going to fall to that. So make sure that part's the strongest. So devil up on your staple and along the bottom end. Now remember what I said about folding it like a Christmas present. All right, so if you're inside the city, I recommend using potting soil. So you can get it at bags, at Bunnings, or wherever you want to grab it. That will be the best thing, but use organic soil companies if you can. And also, one of the great things is, is just lean it against the wall. That's the whole point. So now you have vertical space where you can grow more stuff. So I would just lean it directly up against the wall, fill it full of dirt, and I'll show you how that's all done. But I'm gonna go put it next to my garden. By the way, it's really easy to move these things when they're not full of dirt. So make sure that you've uh, not filled it full of dirt before you move it. Now, if you're little tiny like my wife, you can always roll it into place when you want it to finally move. And it's just a simple activity, okay? So don't strain yourself unless you're some guy trying to prove a point. So I've placed this skid in front of this cement wall so it can simulate balcony living in a city environment, so that's pretty cool. And here's the great thing. I've already filled up with dirt for in the interest of time, so now it's time to get planting. And our number one tool for this is our handy dandy knife. So let's get started. These are the varieties of plants I'm going to choose for this skid. Now you can plant anything you want. Beautiful, big, leafy greens, but I started all of these from seed, so why not? Use what you got. So we've got some cucumbers here, We've got some strawberries, we have some summer squash, and we have some eggplants. So let's get planting. Let's start with the summer squash. And this is one of my grandfather's favorite things. It reminds me of a kid, we used to put it on the skillet, and tons of butter and salt and pepper, and that's it. Take your knife and cut through the soil, just like that. And you're gonna wanna do a T pattern, okay? More like an X, actually. And there's your planter box right there. And you know, there's a beautiful story about how the hanging of gardens of Babylon got started. And it was all about an amazing prince, but he had a very beautiful princess from the east. And Babylon was inside the middle of the desert off the Tigris and Euphrates River. And his wife, his queen, was from the jungle. They got married and they had a beautiful wedding. But every day the queen would go up and she would cry. And the king said to his queen, he said, Queen, I love you so. Why do you cry? And she says, well, 
Where I am from, we have beautiful gardens. Here is nothing but desert, and I will never see it again. And he says to his queen, he says, that I will build you a garden. And he built the most beautiful garden of all time called the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. And it was like this. It, it was tall and all the water would go to the top and it would trickle down like a natural waterfall, feeding each plant as it goes down. And that was all for love. Get another cucumber. And I always plant cucumber seeds in pairs of two. They just tend to do better that way. They have to pollinate each other. So the closer they are together, the closer they're likely to pollinate each other. Now, if there's one plant I recommend planting in a skid and in a vertical garden, it's these babies, strawberries. So, if you're just going to plant one thing, plant strawberries in your skid. Here come the strawberries. There's two inside here. So guess what? We're gonna make more bang for our buck and split these apart. Ooh, yeah. Now look at that. Now we have two strawberries. And the process is exactly the same. Just do a good cut, just like we did and just pop them in there. All right, last row. I picked eggplants because they have the strongest stock, so if I want to do some wire work up here, I can. And see, it just makes a little tiny basket for them to sit in. Isn't that cool? And the water will be able to hit it right away. So that as initial babies will get nice and watered inside these little baskets. And then when eventually what I'll do is I'll just soak it and let gravity feed it. So we'll actually use less water and get more bang for our buck by having a vertical gardening system. I'm kind of wild and I like to do science experiments. And it's good to try new things while you're in the garden. So what I'm gonna do for this top rack is I'm gonna plant a little bit of okra, not a lot, but just to see how it goes and maybe who knows it might grow great so this is just a trial run and a little test for fun done with the knife now we can put that away so now is the moment of truth mr okra or should i call you pharaoh for you originated in the nile river valley and now you're here in my wholesome skid let's see how you do he lasted this long slicky yes slicky yes aha I was hoping I would find you. No, don't leave. I need you. Remember, worms are crucial for your garden. Let them go, let them be. So now this pot, he's gonna have a lot of babies and we're gonna have healthy soil. So, a bit of a test, we'll see how it goes. Now let's go with some more tried and true, a little bit more eggplant seeds and a little bit more cucumber seeds. You can do it. You can grow food no matter where you are because you can always go up if you can't go out. So remember, remember the morals of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Do everything you possibly can for love because when your heart's filled with love, you can build the greatest things. So when you're building your garden and when you're growing your own food, do it with love, okay? So thanks for watching Planted. I'm Logan Huffman and I love you. I'll see you soon. Oh, give it a good water.